so much, Sue. Good morning and welcome to the Church on the Bayou. Thank you for joining us this morning for worship. I am delighted that we have a very special guest with us. Joining us on the phone is Pastor Chet Okopsky. Chet, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. It's uh, nice to see you all. You're you're all looking so good, and I get to see everybody right in their own homes. Uh, I was scheduled to preach at the Church of the Bio this morning, but the good Lord has allowed all of our plans to change a little bit. Uh, Reverend Lissa has invited me to share the call to worship this morning, and so it's my privilege and pleasure to be with you and to share this call to worship. Let us uh, turn our hearts to the Lord in worship. The joy of the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, is with us. We rejoice in the blessings God has poured into our lives. Even though we hear words of doubt, we are called to believe. Even though the world draws us back into darkness, we focus on the light. Thanks be to Christ, who gives us the victory. Together in love, let us worship our God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Chet. I'll be in touch with you again soon. God bless. God bless. Thank you. <clears throat> Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, on this beautiful, sacred day, we thank you for the privilege of worshiping you. We ask your blessing on everyone who is watching, listening. We ask that hearts would be changed, that lives would be enriched, and that your word would be shared with love. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture reading this morning is from 1 Peter 1, beginning in verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again, because God raised Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. There is wonderful joy ahead, and these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him, Though you do not see him now, you trust him, and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward, reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. This is God's word for us this morning. If you're tired of the coronavirus, welcome to the club. You are not alone. If you're tired of staying at home, staying away from your loved ones, from your family and your friends, being super careful about every single thing every time you leave your house, you are not alone. People are getting a little tired of this situation. We are now weeks into this journey and we are probably weeks, if not months, away from things getting back to something that resembles normal, whatever that's going to look like for us. So we all have choices in how we navigate this time, 
right? We can be grumbly, we can be grumpy, or we can be accepting, we can be calm, we can remain in a place of trust in our loving God. My perspective on this entire experience is not your perspective. And your perspective on this experience may not even be your spouse's perspective or your kids or, or anybody else that you interact with. But the fact remains that each of us right now is that this is where we are. I am a big believer in accepting reality. Reality is where we are. And this is, in fact, where we are. We are undeniably in a very strange time. There are challenges, there are adjustments, accommodations, inconveniences even. So the scripture that I just read from the book, First Peter, is not a passage that I just randomly picked out. It's actually one of the passages that is in the lectionary for this week. It's one of the passages that was chosen a long time ago to appear on this date in this particular week. Coincidence? I think not. And I mention this only because it is so totally spot on to inspire us this morning. Listen to this again. There is wonderful joy ahead even though you must endure trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire purifies and tests gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when our faith remains strong through many trials, no matter what, it brings us so much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. We love him even though we've never seen him with our eyes, but we indeed have seen him with our heart. Though we do not see him with our eyes, we have a choice to trust him or not. But how do we actually do this? How do we put this into practice? How do we attain and maintain this faith? So you may want to grab a piece of paper and a pen, because there are a couple of things that I think you might want to jot down here. <clears throat> There's a blog that I read called, it's from the Faith Gateway blog, and this week one of the authors was an author named Storm, Stormy O'Martin, and she writes this, listen to this. Faith is a spiritual muscle that needs to be exercised in order to prevent atrophy. The atrophy which makes our entire spiritual being weak. Faith is first a decision, then it is an exercise in obedience, and finally it is a gift from God as it is multiplied. Our first step of faith is taken when we decide that we will believe, when we decide that we will receive Jesus Christ into our lives. After that, every time we decide to trust God, to trust Christ, to trust the Holy Spirit for everything, every time we make that decision, we build our faith. And whenever we decide not to trust him, whenever we decide to go rogue and figure things out all on our own, we tear down our faith. Faith is our daily decision, sometimes moment by moment, to trust God. Listen to this again, and this is the part to write down. Faith is first a decision it is an exercise in obedience, is the second part. And the third part is that it is a gift that is multiplied. 
a decision, an exercise, and a gift. The writer goes on to say, sensing our own limitations doesn't mean that we don't have faith. Feeling that God has limitations is what indicates a lack of faith. When faith has blossomed, it gives birth to hope and says, there is an end to this. I will not be in this situation forever. I will not always feel like this. I will not always hurt. Hope and faith together give you a vision for your entire life. Your faith is a decision. My faith is a decision. Just because I'm a pastor, just because this is what I do for my vocation, doesn't mean that I do not, on a daily basis, have to examine and re-examine my own heart to be honest, brutally honest, about where my ego is bleeding into places where God needs to be more powerful and more present. Each of us, goes through this journey daily. Our faith is a decision. It is an exercise, and finally, it is a huge gift, one which you are in perhaps right this minute. Think about this for a second. Which stage of this or which part of this are you in? Are you in the wavering place? not really sure whether to trust, not really sure how this is all going to work out? Are you in a place of exercising obedience? Maybe you're in a place of just celebrating and enjoying the gift, the gift of God's love and the power that comes from the security of knowing that God is in charge of your life. We have the power to make that choice and we have the power to exercise obedience. We do not have the power to give the gift. That can only come from God. The gift is God's alone, but we do have the power to receive it. Seriously, ask yourself right now, which piece of this are you in today? Are you still wrestling with whether or not to even Make a decision about having Christ in your heart and in your life? Are you making good, healthy choices for your spirit journey today to actually exercise obedience? Maybe you're just basking in the gift of God's amazing grace and love. So please hear this, my friends. Wherever you are right now, you're not doing it wrong. There is no wrong here. Your journey is your journey, and it is between you and God, and it is intensely personal. And he already knows those deepest places in your heart where you might be angry or frustrated or doubting or hurt. Wherever you are right this minute, please be gentle with yourself. Be honest with yourself, but be gentle at the same time. Remember that you can control only what you can control. Grab hold of all that is within your power to control in your spirit life, in your journey, your thoughts, your words, your actions. Please decide today to release at the foot of the cross all of your worries all of your anxiety. Exercise obedience to God's will for your life. And then celebrate as you bask in the glow of the gift, the gift of our risen Lord, the gift of our freedom, our salvation in Christ. And please, above all, remember that nothing, nothing can shake you off your foundation of faith without your permission. Amen. I'm grateful to welcome Sue Lucas back for her next song that she's going to share with us. And we thank Sue and Dan for the beautiful music this morning.
Friends, I ask if you would please join me in a closing prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father God, today help us to open our hearts and our minds and to make a decision to love you, to follow you, to trust you. God, I know you hear our prayers, and even if I don't see the answers right away, no matter what happens, I am certain that I am not without hope. I have faith, and Lord, please strengthen our faith where it is weak. Amen. Please stay safe this week. Please keep joy in your hearts this week. Please leave a comment below if this service has been helpful for you in any way. If there's anything that I or our church community can do to support you, please send a private message or leave a comment below. We're eager to try to reach out to as many people as we can. We don't know how much longer this new experience is going to go on, but we do know that God is a loving and sovereign God, and he has us in the palm of his hands. Be blessed. Amen. <clears throat>